2 times 2 over square root of 2 times 2 over square root of 2 plus square root of 2 and on and on. What would this nested sum equal to? What if I tell you it actually equals to pi? In this video, I am going to show you how I get this answer and why it makes sense. This is a video about pi. This video is inspired by a question from STEP paper. STEP, or Sixth Term Examination Papers, is a university admission test for undergraduate courses primarily used by University of Cambridge. Each year, two STEP papers are held, with each paper consists of 12 questions. Candidates are required to attempt any six of the 12 questions. Each question weights 20 marks, giving a full mark of 120 marks. This equation came up as a part of the question in Step 3 of 2022, the harder paper of the two held every year. According to the mark scheme, nine marks, out of the 20, were allocated to this sub-question. Yet the derivation, which I am going to give you next, is surprisingly short. In roughly five lines, you should be able to derive the required formula. However, I would like to take the time to give you some insights into this equation. Hopefully you would see that this equation actually played an important role in computing the value of pi and how you can come up with the solution on your own. So here is the proof. It came out as the last part of the question where candidates are supposed to use a previous result in the question. By setting x equals to i pi over 2, we get an expression involving hyperbolic functions. At this point, we can use the relationships between hyperbolic and trigonometric functions to obtain an expression with sine and cosine. What remains is how to go from trigonometric functions to expressions with purely 2 and square root of 2. A breakthrough point to this lies on this term, square root 2 over 2. This is exactly cosine pi over 4. So we might start from this to see the relationships between the terms and cosine pi over 4. By using the double angle formula, we obtain an expression for cosine pi over 8. Or more generally, by repeating the process, we obtain a nested expression for pi over k, with k being any power of 2. What is left is plugging this back to the initial expression and we get the answer. The question ends here, but the meaning of this equation doesn't. Something I learned from 3 blue 1 brown is that when there is a pi, there is a circle. So this expression has something to do with circle. Moreover, the square root of 2 is tied with the Pythagoras theorem, so at least to some extent, this equation should relate to triangles. This rough hypothesis should be true, because we see from the solution that this has to do with a chain of cosines, especially cosine pi over 4. There is a nice rule in step is that, unless it tells you to use the previous result, you do not have to use them. In other words, you could approach this question from scratch. Now I want you to take a step back, if you are not presented the whole question, how would you approach this proof? In particular, are we able to obtain this result by considering only circles and triangles? Since pi is defined by the ratio between diameter and circumference of a circle, it would be nice to start off with a circle of radius 1 and consider the circumference of it. Let us first inscribe a square inside it. We see that the circumference is larger than the perimeter of the square. By the Pythagoras theorem, we see that the perimeter of the square is for square root 2. Now we add a regular octagon in between the square and the circle. 
we see that the perimeter of the octagon is bounded below by the square and bounded above by the circumference. The question is, how much bigger? Let's zoom in and consider this section. From above, the side S4 has length square root 2 and we want to find the sum of the two sides of the regular octagon. Since the octagon is regular, these two sides have the same length. Let's say it is S8. Due to both the square and octagon are regular, it is sufficient to consider only the ratio of this sector which will also be the same as the ratio of the parameters. If we can figure out this angle, then we can easily apply the cosine rule to move on. This angle is actually one of the internal angles of a regular octagon, so it is actually known. The internal angles of a regular octagon sums to 6 pi and every angle is equal. So this angle is 3 pi over 4. Now we can consider the cosine law for this triangle. By the property of cosine function, we get an expression in terms of cosine pi over 4. Now put a regular polygon with 16 sides and zoom in. The similar argument holds and we should get a similar formula. To put this in a general case, for perimeter increase for a regular polygon with n sides, when we move on to a regular polygon with two n sides, would be given by this formula. As we keep doubling the sides of the polygon, the value C2n will get closer and closer to the circumference of the circle. The factor in the increase in perimeter is given by general formula. So we can start from the square then double the sides. If we keep doing it infinitely, we would eventually get the circumference of the circle. To wrap up, this can be expressed by the following formula. Now we can put back in the results from previous arguments and rearrange the equation would give the desired expression that we started with. Using inscribed polygons to estimate pi was the primary method of pi computation in ancient mathematics. This method can be dated back to Archimedes, where he used a regular polygon with 96 sides to find out upper and lower bounds of pi. Throughout the next 2000 years, mathematicians across the world were able to compute pi up to 7 decimal places using regular polygons up to 12,288 sides. As the technology advances, the number of sides keep increasing and increasing and hence the sensitivity of the computation. By 15th century, Islamic mathematicians were already able to apply this polygonal approach to calculate pi to 16 decimal places, with a polygon with 800 million sides. This method was first officially documented in 1593 by a French mathematician Francois Viet, which is the expression shown in the step paper. He stated that the rearranged version of the expression can be used to compute pi if the process is repeated infinitely. This was one of the first infinite sums ever documented in the history of mathematics. This marked the transition from classical geometry to the use of algebra and analysis in understanding mathematical constants like pi. As the time passes, more modern and convenient ways were drawn up to compute pi. Even though these methods have faster conversion rates to pi and are more practicable, Viet's formula is still a milestone in the history of mathematics, showcasing early ingenuity in connecting geometry, infinite process, and the precise calculation of pi. It sets the stage for further exploration of infinite series and products in the centuries to come. Twisting an ordinary university admission question might be unnecessary but it is always a good thing to have your own insights to the questions. The most important criterion that top-class university like Cambridge is looking for is the thinking and reasoning ability. Students can all do well in public examinations by studying all the past papers and textbooks, 
but the thinking and reasoning ability, in particular the ability to relate knowledge and combine them is something you cannot learn from textbook. To close the video, I took out another question from Step. Also, on trigonometry. Again, starting off with a result to be proven, derive the exact value of tangent pi over 48. If you want the direct solution, I am sure that you can find it online easily. But having watched the whole video up to this point, I think that you would be more interested in drawing up your own geometrical approach to prove the result. In the meantime, if you like more videos of this kind, consider supporting or check out this video next that YouTube thinks you would be interested in.